first neighborhood we're going to go through today of the first of the five top neighborhoods of Colorado Springs, and these are in no particular order whatsoever. But uh, the first one, it's kind of more of an area than a neighborhood. We're going to drive through Northgate. So Northgate, um, it's it's really a hot spot within Colorado Springs just because there's so much new development. So there's a lot of new commercial development. I mean, the new In-N-Out Burgers in Northgate, that's obviously a huge draw for a lot of folks. But a lot of the homes um, that were built up here, I think that I would say the area probably first started in the early 2000s and it goes through new construction right now. So again, there's uh, several neighborhoods within the Northgate area, but because it's such a, um, a hot spot right now within Colorado Springs, really just wanted to highlight it for you guys and just kind of give you a little tour of what the neighborhood looks like. So um, over on the right, right now, you can see some of the older homes, again, late 90s, early 2000s build. And this, these neighborhoods used to be, you know, kind of way outside of Colorado Springs, it seemed like, but now they're, they're right in Colorado Springs. It's all just kind of merged together. So you'll see these are a little bit older homes, still really, really nice. Um, and then just here a little bit, you're going to see a new commercial development that's expanded and then also some newer homes as well. We're going to take a quick little tour up that direction. Um, but again, because all the commercial development, that's a big draw for people to the Northgate. Kind of everything you, I guess, would want and need is in the Northgate area. Home prices are a little bit higher than what they are in the rest of Colorado Springs. Just as you typically, as you kind of move north, from Colorado Springs, from the downtown areas, you move north up towards the county line and up towards Denver, home prices typically go up a little bit. Uh, and that's what we see in Northgate as well. So here you can see some commercial development. Uh, like I said, that's fairly new. And then there's a little bit older portion of the commercial development back behind us there. Northgate has a lot of parks in it as well. Here's, um, here's a nice park just over that we're kind of taking a look at right now. Um, that's a big draw for, or it's a big reason for people. Obviously, people come to Colorado typically to spend a lot of time outside. So outdoor area, parks and trails, that's a big uh, thing that most of our clients typically look for. So as we drive up the hill here, you'll see we're going to pass um, Da Vinci Academy. It's one of the elementary schools that services the area. Little kiddos are out playing right now. Um, but this area price points are a little bit higher, I would say, than average within Northgate. Um, this is Stone Crossing. It's, I would say, homes here typically right now, as we all know, the market's pretty hot. But right now, home prices up in here probably start in the sevens, I would say, seven or eight. Might be able to find something in the high sixes, but uh, for the most part, 700 plus. Nice large homes. A lot of large families live up here. They're usually not starter homes. They're kind of move up homes for the most part. Um, this community has been around for a number of years as well, but a lot of great quality home builders that are still building in Colorado Springs are um, built this area. A lot of folks like the Northgate area too, if they commute to Denver, it's right off of I-25. So super convenient if you're commuting to Denver. We're just gonna kinda cruise around this cul-de-sac here. Just wanted to show you guys this area a little bit. We're gonna go check out a couple other neighborhoods within this Northgate area. Like I said, it's gonna be the biggest area that we drive through today. Some great Pikes Peak views. May not be able to get them for you guys, but from up here on top, up in the Stone Crossing area, there's some great views. There's some houses up top. I've had a couple of clients that have purchased up here that have views from the Air Force Academy. You can see the chapel all the way down to Cheyenne Mountain to include Pikes Peak. So really good views from up top. And this angle that's uh, up in the Northgate area, the angle of Pikes Peak is definitely pretty impressive. It kind of looks a lot bigger than it does in other parts of town. So now we're going to go across Voyager. Voyager is kind of the main north-south road that runs through the Northgate area. We're going to go across Voyager and we're going to check out um, another little community that a, a specific builder in town built all the homes in this community. So they developed and built it. We had a number of clients that purchased in there. Um, Stonewater is the name of the community. So all these homes were built around like the 2014 to 2016 timeline. And like I said, it's a little group of houses. I can't remember exactly how many homes were built in here, but uh, it's just a little pocket of homes all around the same build, all by the same builder developer. We'll take a quick little drive through here. just to give you guys an idea of kind of what the homes and what the community looks like. There's a couple little community parks in here. They're pretty small, um, no no real large amenities. But the other good thing is that the HOA dues are, are really low as well. So that, that was a big draw for a lot of folks and continues to be. 
Serenity Park is the area that we kind of just went by. It's very similar to Stone Crossing, a little bit less expensive, just kind of as you go up the hill and Stone Crossing, things get a little bit pricier, but um, it's another great area. We've had a number of clients buy in there and really, really enjoy their time there. There's also some uh, apartments, so these aren't for sale. These are just a couple apartment complexes, kind of more, I guess you could say, luxury apartments, if you will. It's called Bella Springs Apartments. There's a lot of commercial development as you kind of go up on Voyager. We'll kind of see a little bit of that coming up here. But there's a large Bass Pro Shop. There's actually, um, it's not Top Golf, but it's the same thing as Top Golf, just with a different name. But that's going in right now as well. Probably get you guys a little view of that. Um, and there's, yeah, just several, several uh, stores and just a lot of commercial stuff that's kind of coming up in this area. Again, another big draw for Northgate. So now we're coming up on the intersection of Voyager and Northgate. We're going to go north across Northgate and go up into Northgate Highlands. So this is another area that I think it's a great neighborhood. Uh, again, super convenient location on the north end of town. Home price points are, they're a little bit higher. You know, they're kind of like Stone Crossing. You know, you're probably looking at 700000 maybe 600000 to to start with. A lot of great houses, a lot of quality home builders built in here as well. These homes also are kind of early to mid 2000s. And there's some up higher on the hill that are, um, you know, here pretty recent actually. They're not actively building anymore, but there are some uh, almost new homes up at the higher end of the highlands. And as you drive around Northgate, you kind of get a Kind of a general sense of just kind of the style and size of the homes there's a lot of similarities obviously they're they're not truly cookie cutter there's a lot of different models in the area but the style is very similar a lot of the homes are you know just kind of that larger five bedroom maybe even six bedroom home that uh is what you see a lot of on the north end of town So I mentioned a couple times that there's a good bit of new commercial development in Northgate. So we're just going to kind of cruise by some of this here. There's a number of restaurants, um, there's some fast food places and also some nice restaurants that are up here. There's a large shooting range, which is what we're about to drive by right now. Magnum Shooting Center. That's a pretty big draw for folks in the area. Um, Overdrive Raceway is another really cool place. You can race go-karts. It's two levels. It's a pretty cool place for folks to check out. Um, right across from us right now is where they're putting in, I call it Top Golf, even though it's not that, it's by a different name, but it's the same thing as Top Golf, if you guys know what that is. There's a really cool place coming up here. It's called the Boot Barn Hall. So they do live music. Um, used to do it almost every night, but now with the coronavirus situation, it's not quite as often, but they are starting to bring it back. So live music at the Boot Barn Hall. And it's, just, it's not owned by, but it's associated with Bourbon Brothers, which is a restaurant right next to it. Um, so Bourbon Brothers and Boot Barn Hall are two pretty cool places up here. Um, and then the last kind of huge draw, if you will, probably for this area is Bass Pro Shop. So that's right across from us right now. So that's a quick tour of the Northgate area. Like I said, it's multiple neighborhoods, but because there is such a big draw for the area, we just wanted to give you guys a little tour of it. So that's Northgate, north side, far north side of Colorado Springs, just before you get to Monument. Um, yeah, we're going to roll on down to the next one. Now. I think we're going to go check out Rock Rimmon next on the west side of Colorado Springs. Most of Rock Ribbon was built, or I guess I should say they started to build in the 80s, and there's a couple new areas that just finished up here recently. So it's an area that was built over a number of years, but most of the building was in the 80s and 90s. Super desirable part of town just because, it, like I said, it's west side, so super close to the mountains, right up against the foothills, a lot of mature trees, things like that. There's a ton of wildlife over here. That's always a big draw for a lot of folks, too. A ton of deer running around. And parks. As you know, in Colorado, we love our outdoor time, so parks, like I mentioned earlier, is a big draw. So a lot of parks within Rock Rim and small little community parks and then also some larger, um, we're going to drive by one really large park. It's called Ute Valley Park. It's a large city park. Um, so there's a mix of single family homes and some kind of some condos, townhomes as well. There's a few apartments within the Rock Rim area. Not a ton. It's mostly single family homes. There are some businesses in Rock Rim as well, um, you know, medical facilities, things of that nature. And then, of course, there's, you know, schools that service just just this area. So we're going to take a little tour kind of into, I guess, kind of into the heart, if you will, of Rock Ribbon. We're going to cruise up Allegheny. It's a street that kind of goes, I guess, kind of east-west, kind of snakes east-west through the Rock Ribbon area. We're going to take you up high on the, kind of up on the bluff and check out some of the homes up top. And then also some of the homes down here low on Allegheny. And then we'll circle back by that big Ute Valley Park that I mentioned. 
price points in rock ribbon um you know there you can get into rock ribbon maybe high 400s i would say uh 500s is more realistic we have uh, a great young couple that just purchased in rock ribbon uh they closed about a week ago or so and they're really loving the area so far like i said just a super friendly area it's a more mature neighborhood for sure you don't get a little, not quite as much of the hustle and bustle as you get um, on the east side of Colorado Springs. The school district that services Rock Ribbon is District 20. It's the uh, Air Academy School District, or Academy School District, I guess I should say. Foothills Elementary is located in Rock Ribbon. Typically, the home values go up a little bit, and that's no different than it is here in the Rock Ribbon area. Like I said, down low, you can get in in the high 400s, low 500s. And as you get up high, we'll show you, we'll kind of drive by some homes here that, uh, you know, price points are going to be more in the seven to 800,000 to start out. And then, of course, push into the seven figures, depending on the, the specific home. There are some pretty amazing views up uh, up on top of Rock Rim. And there's some homes that have some amazing views of the foothills. And then also homes that face out to the east have some really cool views of Colorado Springs. You can kind of see the whole expanse of the city from up top. So definitely a lot of variety within the Rock Rimmon area for sure. So as we continue on west on Allegheny through Rock Rimmon, uh, we're going to come out to Centennial Boulevard, which is a major north, uh, yeah, north-south road that goes through Rock Rimmon. And the area on the west side of Centennial Boulevard, which like I said, we'll get to here in a little bit, but the area on the west side, those homes are um, about the same age, maybe a tiny bit newer. I would say probably started in the 90s, whereas a lot of Rock Ribbon started in the 80s. So it's um, it's just another section of Rock Ribbon, um, great communities kind of throughout the Rock Ribbon area. It's definitely one of the areas that uh, as we get people that are interested in Colorado Springs that contact us, it's definitely one of the first areas that people ask about, one of the one of the top neighborhoods that folks start their search in for sure. Kind of offers a lot of what you think of when you think of Colorado Springs, which is being close to the mountains, um, you know, kind of foothills kind of area that homes are built into. So this is Centennial Boulevard, and off of Centennial, we're going to turn on to Vindicator, and we're going to go back, uh, we're going to go by that big city park I was mentioning earlier, Ute Valley Park. This is a super popular park on the west, kind of the northwest side of Colorado Springs. When I lived over in this area, I used to come here all the time. It's got a lot of trails for, a lot of mountain biking trails and running and hiking trails as well. It's just really scenic. I see a lot of folks out here having picnics in the summertime, things like that. I don't know exactly how big it is, but it's definitely a pretty expansive park. It's one of the larger ones within the city limits. So that's Rock Room in the number two neighborhood on our top five neighborhoods in Colorado Springs. Again, west side location. That's a huge draw for Rock Room. And we're going to head to the downtown part of Colorado Springs now. It's an area that has had a lot of revitalization lately and a huge demand for it. So we'll go check that out next. Number three on the Colorado Springs top five neighborhoods is downtown. Downtown Colorado Springs has changed a lot over the last few years. Um, there used to be, there was kind of a little tiny part of downtown that people really wanted to be in, but not that much. And now there's just been a ton of revitalization. So we're going to kind of give you a quick little tour from the south side of downtown, which is the area that used to not be very nice at all, but has definitely seen a lot of revitalization. So we'll give you a quick little tour from the downtown area of Colorado Springs up through the north side of downtown through what's known as Old North End. It's kind of the fancier homes in the downtown area and a little bit more expensive too. Because of the, the uh, because of the demand for downtown homes, prices have definitely went up substantially. So it's really hard to find anything downtown for under $350,000, $400,000, even some of the smaller homes, uh, the smaller older homes. A lot of the homes were built uh, around the turn of the century, so late 1800s, early 1900s, just kind of when Colorado Springs was founded, just kind of the nature of the beast, if you will. So uh, first stuff we're going to kind of take a look at that was, it's, I really just want to show everybody just the amount of development and kind of what the downtown area looks like on a commercial basis. You'll see there's some new couple new hotels going in downtown. There's a new parking garage going in downtown. We're going to take a quick little detour over and check out the uh, the Olympic Museum. And there's also a new um, sports field that's going to be downtown. It's going to host the local soccer team, the Switchbacks. So, like I said, just a ton of development, not only on the housing side with apartment buildings and condos, but also on the commercial side and just new attractions for downtown. Colorado Springs is definitely becoming a, uh, a tourist town for a lot of reasons, and that's just kind of adding to it for sure. 
downtown's a cool little mix of kind of old and new so there's an um we used to be the old courthouse is now the pine what's known as the pioneers museum and then like i said there's just a ton of new construction going on kind of mixed in with the older buildings in downtown so one of the big uh, negatives that you used to hear about Colorado Springs in the downtown area is the lack of restaurants. So um, driving up Tejon Street, you'll see there's a ton of restaurants downtown now. Um, there's still some that aren't all that great, but there's a lot of really good food downtown, which has kind of filled a, a need, if you will, that um, the Colorado Springs area had for a long time. So earlier I mentioned the U.S. Olympic Museum. You can see that out in the distance right there. That's a big new, um, a big new feature for downtown. And when I mentioned that the downtown area has seen a lot of revitalization, that uh, huge facility is actually kind of down by the train tracks. It used to not be that great, great a part of downtown, but uh, just with all the money that's been put in by the local city government into the downtown area, it's definitely changed the look of it a lot. One of the other big changes to downtown that I mentioned was. The, uh, there's this new soccer stadium going in. So the Switchbacks soccer team, this is the new stadium for it. It's always been something that Colorado Springs for a city of its size has lacked. It's kind of like a downtown sports area. So that's what this is right here. I think it's called Widener Field, if I remember correctly. All right, so now we're gonna get into some of the residential areas just to show you what some of the housing looks like downtown Colorado Springs. Like I said, mostly older. Um, just about all of downtown was built in the late 1800s, early 1900s. All right, so we're driving through kind of what would be the, the southern residential part in Colorado Springs downtown area. And like I said, we're just gonna kind of work our way up from south to north as well, just like we did with the commercial stuff. This is an area where, again, a lot of revitalization. I know I keep saying that over and over, but it's just the, it's just what we think of with downtown Colorado Springs. And you'll see some sections that we're gonna drive by where it's not really the best. And, um, and it's kind of, like it's on the edge, you know? Those are the areas that a lot of work is currently being done in um, to kind of make it match the rest of downtown. There's a huge park downtown called Memorial Park. Um, it's, uh, there's actually a lake, Prospect Lake, that is part of the park. A lot of walking trails throughout the park. So it's kind of just all open, open field, but a really nice park if you live in the downtown area to come hang out in, play soccer, frisbee, whatever you want to do. So the Old North End is what I would call the historic district of downtown Colorado Springs. So a lot of the houses, um, they've just been probably, I would say, more well, better maintained throughout the years. Uh, there's a few lots where they've actually scraped homes off of and then built them back to kind of what I would say is period correct homes. Home values in the old north end are a little bit higher than what they are in the rest of downtown. There's actually a pretty significant price increase once you get into what's officially the old north end into the historic district. Homes are typically in very good condition. Yards are well maintained, things of that nature. So it's a really, really great part of downtown Colorado Springs. Definitely the most, uh, most in demand, if you will. Um, and unfortunately, just because prices have went up so much, a lot of folks have kind of gotten priced out of the priced out of the old North End. But I guess that's also done a good thing in the fact that it's helped revitalize a lot of the other parts of downtown um, where the price points are still maybe a little bit less. And the homes are still extremely nice. And the proximity to kind of the heart of downtown is really the same. You're just coming from maybe the, the east of downtown or the south side of downtown. A couple other highlights of the downtown area in Colorado Springs are the, there's a college downtown. Colorado College is located in downtown Colorado Springs. Um, there's also a public golf course. Patty Jewett Golf Course is also in downtown Colorado Springs. So we're going to take a little, just a quick little drive by the college. One, the college has really done a great job of, I guess, just kind of making a part of town look really, really good. So it, um, it's not the least expensive college there is, so there's a lot of money there and the college spends it well they kind of work really well with the city council to to make sure that that part of downtown stays really really nice and it is it's kind of the prime location is just north of the the heart of downtown where all the restaurants and commercial stuff is all right number four on the top five neighborhoods in colorado springs this is a little bit different because we are out uh, on the east side of colorado springs and banning lewis ranch so Banning Lewis Ranch is the largest new home development in Colorado Springs. Um, it started actually back in 2004, 2005, and then the whole community was put on a hiatus whenever the, the housing crash happened. And it's kind of, it got back on track and it's really going gangbusters right now. There's just, there's a ton of land 
the, uh, that the developer owns. So there's a lot of room for expansion. And it's all just kind of open grassland to the east of town that, uh, that they purchased and that they're building on right now. So there's some really highly rated schools. Banning Lewis Ranch Academy is within Banning Lewis. So really, really highly rated elementary school. Uh, there's what they call the Ranch House, which has a little workout facility in it. Um, kind of a little community meeting room as well. And then some outdoor space that any of the residents can use. There's uh, the homes, like I said, they, they vary in age from 2004 to currently being built. And they range in size from, I would say, well, there's actually some new homes that Oakwood Homes is building. And they are as small as 1,000 square feet. It's called their American Dream Series. So really small homes all the way up to homes that, gosh, are, you know, 6,000 square feet, six, seven bedrooms. Prices range from on those really small 1,000 square foot homes I mentioned are around 300,000, a little bit over. And then you can buy homes in Banning Lewis that are, um, gosh, I would say probably around 700,000, maybe, maybe a little bit over that for some of the largest homes if you're building brand new construction. So the community's doing a really good job of amenities. Like I said, they have the ranch house. They also have a splash pool, a splash park rather for the kids in the summertime. There's some plans for uh, new community centers. There's a lot of parks throughout Banning Lewis. That was kind of one of the selling points when the community first started is that the lot sizes were really, really small with really small yards, but like 5,000 square foot lots, which if that doesn't mean a whole lot to you, just know that they're really small, but they put in a lot of parks. So there's a lot of parks and trail systems throughout Banning Lewis Ranch. There's, um, there's tennis courts and pickleball courts. So just a lot of uh, a lot of development. Like I said, it's going to be a huge community when it's all said and done. It's almost kind of going to be a city unto itself. It's going to stretch from Mark Shuffle and Woodman. That's a major intersection here in Colorado Springs, just east of town. And it's actually going to stretch all the way out to Highway 24 and Falcon. So it's going to kind of join together with Falcon, which is a uh, town of itself, which is about 10 minutes, 15 minutes outside of Colorado Springs. So anyway, Banning Lewis Ranch is a rapidly growing area. There's a ton of new construction going on. I've had a number of clients purchase in Banning Lewis already this year just because of the opportunities for new construction and the, um, yeah, just the amenities. So there's a, a lot of good stuff going on in Banning Lewis. If you're thinking of Colorado Springs or haven't been out there, definitely go out and check it out. Another pretty cool thing about Banning Lewis is there's, there's actually kind of a sub neighborhood I want you guys to check out. It's called The Retreat. Um, so it's within Banning Lewis. It's kind of, it is part of Banning Lewis, but it's a 55 plus community. So the, uh, that's obviously a requirement. You have to be over 55 to live in the, in the neighborhood, but it's its own separate gated community. So the streets are maintained by the HOA instead of the city. So really cool thing. You can actually have golf carts in the area. Um, so we've had actually two clients already purchase in this area. You'll be able to see it's under construction right now. There's a handful of homes that are finished and folks have moved into. There's going to be a separate rec center, separate pool, kind of all that stuff specifically for the retreat residents. And the intent is that they're, I want to say smaller homes, but gosh, they're still, I mean, 3,000 square feet for the most part. Um, but the homes are low maintenance, so the, the community, the HOA, will take care of snow plowing, um, yard maintenance, things of that nature. So it's kind of that low maintenance living uh, for folks. We've had the folks that uh, we've had purchase here are downsizing from larger homes in Colorado Springs and, and moving into the retreat area. So a lot of amenities, it'll be just for this specific sub-community, if you will. Like I mentioned, one of the nice things about Banning Lewis is just the wide spectrum of price points that you can purchase at. So we're gonna drive through a little area that, um, it's called the Oakwood Homes Builds These Houses and it's called their Carriage House Collection. And these houses are, they're really nice in the fact that they're they are modern on the inside and the outside. They're pretty cool looking. They have a shared driveway with three other homes and the price points are a lot lower than what other single family homes are. And again, they're not quite zero maintenance, but uh, the HOA does take care of a lot of the stuff for the for the residents. These are super popular for folks that are moving into Colorado Springs and honestly a little bit shocked at the price points of homes. Uh, so these kind of help you get in a little bit lower price point than if you're just building, I guess what I call a regular single family with a large lot uh, here in Banning Lewis. So these homes, as you'll kind of see, they have almost really kind of a zero lot line on the sides. There's really no side yard and not much front yard, and they have a little backyard associated with them. But super popular for those that are trying to stay at a little bit lower price point.
Number five on our very subjective list of top five neighborhoods in Colorado Springs is Cordera. Cordera is the newest community that's part of the Briargate area on the northeast of Colorado Springs. Um, yeah, Cordera, it's been, an, they started the community a number of years ago, and it's a large community, so they're still building right now. But uh, what draws people to Cordera, really, a lot of it's a school district. It's in District 20, which is um, a lot of folks try to get their kiddos into District 20 schools. There's uh, a lot of quality home builders that build in the area. Um, so some of the top production builders in town all build in Cordera. There's a lot of commercial stuff around Cordera. So as far as stuff to do, you know, you have some local shopping and restaurants and things close by. It's very close to Colorado Springs. Well, gosh, we're probably only about maybe 15 minutes from downtown probably. Um, so close proximity for those that are working uh, downtown Colorado Springs. Number of houses, there's, I don't know exactly the number, but that's another big draw. It's just there's a lot of options out here. Like I said, there's a lot of great home builders. There's new homes, there's resale homes. There's also a lot of amenities. That's a big thing. It's kind of a theme you'll see when we talk about top communities or top neighborhoods is just the amenities that they offer. So there's a uh, there's a large outdoor pool. There's a, bit, there's a rec center. There's an area that they call, I think they call it the Grand House maybe. It's on the Grand Lawn, I do know that much. Um, so there's a big outdoor area that you can reserve and use for parties, things like that. So there's also a lot of parks within Cordera that people really, um, that people are really drawn to. So it's one of those communities that just has a lot to offer for families. Um, there's not, probably not a lot of uh, single folks maybe that live in Cordera, at least not nearly as many. It's more of a draw for families because of the amenities. Home sizes are quite a bit larger too. Probably about the smallest home you're gonna find in Cordera. Gosh, I gotta think it's probably 3,000 to 3,500 square feet, something like that. Um, and like I said, they are still building in Cordera, so there's options for new homes as well. Thanks so much for riding along with us today while we get to check out what I personally think are five of the best communities in the Colorado Springs area. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the neighborhoods or anything about the Pikes Peak area, looking to buy or maybe looking to sell here in town, definitely feel free to reach out to us anytime. We are truly here to guide you to your real estate success. And if you like the video, if you'd like to see more like it, definitely take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much, everybody.